doing or, or, or being where you need to be, make the leap. And that's what I did. That's what I did when I walked on the University of Missouri, became an All-American. That's what I did when I left the relative security of my previous organization, walking into, running into the UFC, saying yes to everything, get, keeping my work boots on, putting on a phenomenal show. And now uh, I believe I've become UFC champion because of it. Um, so I think it validates everything. There was a couple sleepless nights there where I wonder if I was making the right decision when I tested free agency. Um, but it has paid off in droves and here we go about to win a title. Were you expecting that sort of reception from Tony? Were you expecting that sort of reception from Tony? Honestly, I wasn't even sure what I was going to get from Tony, but I, I'm, I'm glad I got it. Me too, buddy. The fight's with you. It's not with anybody else. I appreciate it, bud. Let's go. Tony, he's saying the fight's with you, but not anybody else. But what would it be like to finally fight with the fans around you? Uh, it was exciting when there was nothing there, and it was exciting when there's something here. Uh, when we go out there, it doesn't really matter, everything disappears, and it's just like, it's like tunnel vision. It's exactly what it is. We go out there, and we do our best, it's going to be a general fight, and then we go out there, and we're going to give you fans exactly what you fucking earn. <laughs> These two gentlemen who are fighting for a vacant title, who I had 12 fights in a row, and I fought for a title, but then I got stripped, right? The other day, one of the cameramen tripped over a fucking cord when I was giving an interview, and it was actually not funny. The only thing is, is God never puts enough on our plate that we can't handle. Last year I put so much on my damn plate that he fucking picked me up for this year. 2021's my bitch. Mark, we here for uh, my channel. I uh, just want to thank, has life changed for you at all since that big knockout over Hooker? Obviously, it was your UFC debut. Uh, what, is, what has changed in that anything? A couple of things on the surface level, you know, a couple more followers, a couple more fans, a couple more pats on the back, a couple more affirmations thrown my way, but you got to keep the main thing the main thing, which is what I've done since I was 13 years old, dedicating myself to, to my craft. So life has changed in, in, a, in a lot of ways. There's a bigger spotlight, a bigger platform, a bigger opportunity, um, and now getting this title shot, obviously things have, have changed since. Um, so it's blessed, blessed to be in this position. And uh, I feel great about it. I feel like I'm just now scratching the surface. I feel like I got another couple of years and kind of last right here, right here in the UFC. Does any part of you make you regret like maybe not going to the UFC soon? No, it's a great question because you know two years ago, four years ago, and I told him this when we had that conversation. I said two years ago, four years ago, I wouldn't have been the man, the competitor, the champion that you deserve to have on your brand. I wouldn't have been that man. Now I am that man. Now I am that guy. And I think that my that performance at UFC 257 proved that. I think the way that I've handled everything thus far has proved that. And uh, at this point, as I said, I feel like I'm still just scratching the surface. And uh, I, I think timing is everything in life, and the doors stay closed for the right amount of uh, the right amount of time until they're ready to be opened. And that door opened at the exact right time and under the perfect circumstances. And, and you know, we talk about this title shot, I'm just a beneficiary of some interesting circumstances with yeah, being retired, right. you know, Ori and Connor have their trilogy, so he could, could not handle, or could, could not have scripted anything better, it's perfect. Thanks. You fucking dodged me too, Chandler. That's, that's not true, bitch. Every fucking person out here except for this guy right here that's sitting next to me. Hey, that's not true. I'm gonna be real, man. The other side, those are you other you could've fought me January 23rd, and I would have done the same thing to you. And, and you fucking said, no, man. I'm gonna be real. You got, you got the shit handed to you. You got Dana White privilege. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Call up, baby. <laughs> This shit up. Dana was right. He said timing is everything. Like I said, if it wasn't meant for me to have the title, man. I would have gave everybody a chance, right? Fucking awesome. No, absolutely fucking not. These guys are going to try to keep the title away from me as much as they can. I'm Mexican. It doesn't matter if you're colored up here or not. But I'm being American Park. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, of course, Charles, as so many Brazilian fighters, especially the big ones, a lot of them come to the United States. They do their training camps in the U.S. You stay in Brazil. You stay in Brazil for your whole training camp. Why is that? Why is that important? Charles, todos os lutadores brasileiros vêm dos Estados Unidos treinam aqui, mas você escolheu ficar no Brasil e treinar lá. Por quê? Você tem que se tem que treinar onde se sente bem. É, vários vieram para cá, para cá e se sentiram bem ficar aqui. Eu já vim, mas eu me sinto bem treinando no Brasil com a minha família, é, perto da minha equipe. Cada um tem a sua escolha. 
Yeah, you need to train when you feel good. A lot of the Brazilians come here, they feel good. I've tried, I didn't feel good. I feel good to my family, I feel good in Brazil training with my team. Thanks, Charles. And for Tony, uh, someone asked Neil about the reception you got in Houston. It seems like this is a Bukui country. Are you surprised by the reception you got here? No, I was off for a year and a half. I had an injury that was from my arm and a arm break. A year and a half uh, sent me back. Uh, when I came back here and I fought Houston against Mike Rio, I finished it. I got lots of love here. I remember when uh, Travis Brown, I think it was Travis Brown, he said, Dana, I know we're here for the, the, the performance bonus meeting. And he says, you know, everything's bigger in Texas, Dana, right? Right, you remember that? And he said, he said, how about a bigger bonus? So I'm going to ask you, Dana, since we're here, like last night, can we get a bigger bonus this time? Can we get a bigger bonus this time? Do you have another question? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, that's a no. Uh, for Dana, I asked, I asked Mike Chandler if he had any regrets about maybe not coming to the UFC sooner. Do you kind of wish that you had Mike Chandler before now? I agree with him. I think that everything has worked out perfectly for him. Um, yeah, I, I, no. Yes, it would have been great, but it, it's, all, it's all worked out great for him. It literally has been perfect for him since he's been here. And then just one more. Charles Oliveira has been in the UFC since 2010. He was really young when he started. Did you always knew he was capable of this elite level at the lightweight division? Well, the guy's been on a tear forever. Um, you know, <laughs> timing hasn't worked out as well for him as it has for Michael Chandler. But he finally got here and, uh, you know, always been a dangerous guy. Has had some ups and downs in his career. Um, but, you know, he's a talented dude and here he is. Final. Get a shot. Yep.